Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate an AI research tool, Infranodus, that uses a combination of text analysis, network science, and the latest AI models to enable you to visually explore any topic in a scientific discourse, identify the main ideas inside, how they connect to one another, also reveal the gaps between them, so you can see uh, what information or what uh, insights are missing, and then use the AI to generate interesting research questions that can help you link those ideas in new and interesting ways. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching, I will demonstrate it step by step. So first of all, uh, you need to open um, Infranodus and then go to the science apps here, scientific discourse analysis, and use one of the apps that will allow you to import data from scientific journals. Here I'm going to use Google Scholar and I'm going to make a query on qualitative analysis. And what happens here is that Infranodus will visualize this data. So I already have a graph actually which, where, where I imported this data. And it's going to be shown as a graph where the texts that are analyzed are the Google Scholar search results. So you have the names of the papers and some excerpts from them that Google finds the most relevant. And uh, here we have 80 excerpts because I actually made two searches, one on thematic analysis and one on qualitative research. And then the words that I used um, in these ex excerpts are shown as the nodes on the graph. And if they're used in the same context, they will be connected. So this enables us to build a, a network representation of this text where we can see the main ideas. They will be bigger on the graph. We can see how they can connect to one another. We can also identify the topical clusters or the groups of ideas that tend to occur in the same context. They're all available here in the analytics panel. And we can also use this graph to identify the gaps in the discourse. So we can identify some of the topics that could be better connected, uh, which usually leads to us asking interesting questions that are relevant to the discourse because they touch upon the subject that we find important, uh, but that haven't been asked before because they're connecting them in new ways. So this is how it would work. Um, I'm using a, an actual topic that I don't know so much about. I kind of know it on a very surface level, so it's going to be interesting for me to also go real time and to do that in this demonstration. And I'm going to, to show you what workflow I would use. So basically, first of all, when the graph is visualized, in fact, Infranodus removes the search terms that you used because if they were inside, I will get them back into the graph. They would take too much attention because normally, let's say if I click on thematic analysis, you will see that most of the search results, they actually contain those terms, right? Because this is how Google works. So we don't want to see those terms because we want to see the context around them. So I will select them in the graph and then hide them here. So then I can see the context around them. Here I also see that TA is used a lot, which is a term for, te for thematic analysis, I guess. So I'm also going to hide it as well. And now I have a cleaner graph that shows me some ideas uh, that underlie those, those main topics. Okay, so this is interesting. I can start working with that. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is to just look at the graph and see if I can reveal some interesting patterns or, or ideas that I find important. By the way, if at any point of time you need some help on this workflow, you have a workflow helper available here at the top right corner, and you can just follow the steps identified here to perform a full diagnostics of uh, any text data. So here I'm doing the second step of exploring text network visualization. Okay, so I'm looking at the graph. I see that there's quite a lot of research about the specific methods used. I also see that uh, this approach is used a lot in psychology and in health. And then I also see that they talk about approach, of course, uh, and then data and process. Okay, so this gives me a general understanding of uh, what kind of content exists in scientific literature on this topic. I will write down some of the insights I got. So for example, qualitative research and thematic analysis are used in psychology and health. So this is just my observation. I'm going to save it here into the project notes. It's available here, and if you have some insights, um, you can always save your ideas here just to keep track of them. And then once I analyze it visually like this, I don't really get any more ideas. One recommendation I have is to always look at the periphery and see if there's some interesting stuff, like here there's something on gender queer, okay? 
Let's look in which context it's used. I can select this node and maybe some other one. Okay, so thematic analysis of genderqueer narratives. Okay, so I can see that it's also used uh, in the analysis of gender and queer narratives. So that can be interesting. I can add that it's also used uh, in sociology and anthropology. So this is another note I'm going to make about the application of these approaches that I'm going to study based on this insight. Once I'm done with the visual analysis, I can mark it off as complete and go to the next step, which is also shown here, reveal high level ideas. And this is an interesting way to just get a general overview of what this is about. So as you can see in the analytics panel here on the right, which you can open here or here, you have the main topics, which are identified based on the clustering of the terms. So those ideas that are used in the same context, they will form clusters in this text. And if I select them, I will see uh, what those ideas are. I can read through them and manually try to interpret them myself and give them names. Or I can also use the built-in AI to actually do this for me. So I'm going to click Reveal High-Level Ideas and it's going to send those clusters to the AI. And the AI will come up with some names for those clusters, which will give me an understanding of what they're about. So I see that it's about process mapping, theoretical framing, so theory, methodology, uh, and also this gender queer analysis became quite an important topic because I think it's talking about um, some specific applications of this. I can also look at the more topics here and see if there's something interesting. So for example, I see reflexive practice. This is quite interesting to me. Uh, and usually what I find interesting is what lies at the periphery. So this is also an approach that you can use because you don't want to focus on the stuff that everyone is talking about. You probably want to explore some interesting tangent uh, that is maybe more related to what you're thinking about, right? So I can click those terms, reflexive practice here. Okay, and then I can see in which context it was used, which research. Okay, so what counts as quality practice in reflexive thematic analysis? Okay, this is something new. I didn't know what reflexive thematic analysis is. I can actually click on this search result and see uh, the actual abstract of this document and try to understand what reflexive uh, analysis is. I can also do something else. I can open this AI insight panel and I can make a manual AI query and ask the AI what is reflexive practice and then I click uh, the module I want to use. In this case I'm going to use GPT-4. You can also use uh, the other modules which, which exist out there and then it's going to generate a response to this question for me explaining to me what um, is reflexive practice. Probably I should have mentioned also in thematic analysis to give it a little bit more context but it's also interesting to give it less context to open up uh, to the ideas outside of the field, right? So here it says that reflexive practice involves introspection and continuous self-examination, bridging in the gap between theory and action. In this approach, individuals critically reflect on their experiences, beliefs, and actions to gain insights for personal growth or change in behavior. Okay, I'm going to save it into my project notes. I can click here. It's going to be automatically saved into my notes, which I can later use to make an outline of this research. You can also generate more responses by clicking here and then it's going to come up with some other options. So critical analysis of their actions and experiences. Okay, that's great. I understand what reflexive practice is. Now let's say, let's ask the system, uh, how can thematic analysis be used for reflective practice? Okay, asking the question and then generating some interesting response through uh, GPT-4 in this case and is going to come up with, a, with an answer that will probably give me some more context on what this thematic uh, analysis in the context of reflexive practice is. Sometimes GPT-4 can take some time so if you encounter uh, some delay you can also use a faster GPT-3 modules but I just want to have high quality content here so I'm going to use that. Uh, thematic analysis can enhance reflexive practice by identifying recurring patterns, enabling critical examination of personal biases and assumptions, ultimately fostering a deeper understanding of one's own thought process. Okay, great. This is really interesting for me. I'm going to save this. And at this point, I think that reflexive practice is something that I'm really interested to explore more. So 
what I can do is go into the import panel here and uh, click on Google Scholar again. And what you notice, what's going to happen is that it's going to add the, the terms that I selected as a search query. So I'm going to modify it and add thematic analysis. And then it's going to add it back into the same graph. So I'm performing search in Google Scholar to get more content on this topic into the graph so I can enhance this discourse uh, with these new ideas. And by the way, because Google Scholar doesn't really provide an official API, this takes a little bit long, so you need to wait. Uh, but you will be rewarded with a very nice uh, result. So let's hide these terms uh, that are not hidden, that are not so important for us, okay. And then what you can do here is you can actually filter by the last search that you did. So here I had a reflexive practice thematic analysis. I'm going to filter and just show the stuff that I obtained uh, from this last query, just to see how it fits. And I can see that it's about data approach, experience of the practitioner. So again, I'm analyzing the graph visually. I can also generate high level ideas to give the names to those topical clusters which are identified here. So I can understand a little bit better uh, what it's about. If I don't like how it's aligned, I can align it a little bit better and zoom in. So I'm just going to do it like this here. Okay, so analytical interviewing is interesting to me. And cognitive reflexivity. Okay, this is great. Uh, a topic that seems quite interesting to me. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on that. I can choose reflexivity and cognitive. And then the graph shows me how those topics are connected together and it also shows me in which context they're used on the left. So I can also go into relations here and see that in fact uh, they don't have any common connections because they would be shown here. But what I do see is that there are some partial connections through data and theme. So I can select those, reflexivity, cognitive, data, theme, approach and what's cool is that I can use the AI model again to generate some content in relation to those terms. And as you know, AI models are kind of forced to come up with meaningful responses. And it's very interesting to use it in this way because you're connecting ideas that are not so well connected, but you're um, making the system perform this connection uh, anyway. And usually it will come up with, with pretty interesting ideas. Like here it says, reflexivity in cognitive process can enhance the data analysis by encouraging a deeper exploration of thematic connections. This is actually great because, in fact, I'm studying this topic to see how it could be, how Infranodus could also be used in this field. So it's great for me because I can use some of those ideas to then see how Infranodus could be helpful for that. So I'm going to save this idea into the graph, then regenerate some more responses, adapting themes as new insights emerge. Okay, great. So I'm going to save this too. As you can see, I'm gathering quite a lot of ideas. Um, it's like I went to the forest to pick mushrooms, but instead uh, I'm on Google Scholar picking some synthetic ideas that are still relevant to the discourse. So that's like a great uh, way of also playing with this content and discovering it and exploring it in an interesting way. Um, and then what I can also do is, uh, you know, once I explore the graph visually, and I have these high level ideas, I zoomed into the topics. So I will mark all of this complete. Here we did this already, relationships, main topical clusters, zoom, zooming in on some of the topics we did. Um, there is an interesting feature here that is called uh, gap insights. So basically what happens here is that it identifies the topics which exist in this discourse but are not yet well connected. And then it tries to propose uh, to to think of a connection between them. So here we have a structural gap between experiential learning and cognitive reflexivity. I can either interpret this connection myself, so trying to come up with some explanation of how they could be related to generate a research question in this direction, or I can use the AI to make it generate a research question for me. So I'm going to select the structural gap and then click uh, AI inside question and it's going to generate a research question for me that would link these two topics together and what's what's nice is that it's relevant because it's touching upon the topics that exist in this discourse but it's connecting them in a new way. So here it's talking about reflexive tools 
and how they foster cognitive exploration, advancing a practitioner's understanding of the impact of their experiences while developing effective learning strategies to elevate the quality of the skill base. So maybe I will take this practical part out, but the rest I'm going to save into the notes again and continue gathering my ideas in this way. Ask it to generate more responses. Also something for critical thinking and uh, learning experience. Okay, great. And so on. As you can see, I'm kind of moving uh, along these propositions and then maybe I will regenerate some more structural gaps and see if there is some interesting uh, connections that can be discovered. So for example here there's something about Clark Brown uh, and design thinking. Okay, so I can focus on this gap, click on this gap and then it will generate a research question that will link this gap in an interesting way. And by the way, uh, what I can also do, which I really like, is if, let's say, I have this question and I want to ask this to the AI itself, so I think it's an interesting question, but I don't know how to answer it. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to make a manual AI query and I'm going to send the same question to ChatGPT. So I'm using the AI to generate research questions, but I'm feeding them back into the system. So this is a really good example of human in the loop kind of work with AI, where I'm steering the conversation I'm having using the insights I get from the graph and from the structure of the discourse, but the AI is doing the actual work of generating language for me. Um, I think it allows you to work um, in a different way. Of course, you still need to read the texts and uh, do proper research, but this is a very interesting way to, to uh, kind of take a discourse explore it visually, touch it from different directions, have multiple perspectives on it, generate some ideas, and then approach the topic uh, in a way that you wouldn't have uh, normally do. So this is how we are basically doing that with Infranodus. And in this, in this case, it's providing me an interesting answer that Clarkson Brown's key thinking and design principles involve interdisciplinary approach to problem solving, incorporating human-centeredness, collaboration, creativity, experimentation, and adaptability. Okay, let's see if there's something else. Critical thinking with design principles. So maybe this combination with design principles can be nice. I'm going to save it into my notes and maybe use it later for my research about how Infernalus could be helpful for thematic analysis and for reflexive practices. And then once I'm done with researching this particular aspect, I can just filter and show all the, all the statements on the graph and then uh, use the same gap inside feature to see how I can develop this discourse further. So I would reset the highlight again and then ask the system to show me other gaps that could be interesting for me to explore further. So this is how it would work with the structural gap inside. Um, I would mark it as complete here, revealing and bridging. And here, one last thing I want to show is uh, the location of discourse connector points. And these are really interesting uh, elements that are derived from social sciences. So basically we're looking at this text network as if it's a social network and we try to find the concepts that have high influence but small number of connections. So if we made a comparison or an analogy to a social network, those would be the people that know uh, important people but they don't know so many people. But they're still interesting to approach because they can get us directly into a certain community. So in the same way here, we have the words that like to hang out together in certain constellations, which are shown here on the graph. And we identify those words that have high influence but low number of connections because there will be easier entry points into this discourse or they would allow us to connect this discourse better to some other discourses. And I can highlight those nodes and see that, okay, psychology, health, interview, analyze, themes. So I can see that maybe if I make something in the direction of using uh, interview analysis in the field of psychology and health, this could be an easy entry strategy for me into the scientific discourse because I know I'm touching upon the topics that are important, uh, but not uh, the ones that everyone absolutely in this field is talking about, right? So I'm going to actually save uh, this idea into the, my notes and I'm going to write that uh, psychology and health interview uh, theme analysis. So this is something I'm going to focus when I explore this topic further. And I can also use the AI to generate some content that would link those ideas together 
for me and usually it comes up with some interesting statement that can help me see how I can combine those ideas in an interesting way. Analyzing chapter themes and strategies in psychology interview can uh, uncover essential health-related process pertaining to personal well-being. Okay, I can see what other things exist. Improving mental health through so structured process derived from interviews. Okay, this is interesting. I'm going to save it into the notes and use it later. And as you can see, I have quite a few notes here. Once I'm done, and of course, maybe if I did this for a longer time, I would have uh, more notes. I can also generate a summary of my notes here. And what's going to happen is that it will just give me one paragraph that will summarize all the insights I had from studying this context. So this is a very interesting way to kind of complete uh, your research iteration and to understand a little bit, you know, what is the synthesis of all the ideas that you wrote down. So here it's talking about what qualitative research and thematic analysis are used for, uh, how they can allow individuals to critically reflect on their experiences and beliefs, uh, speaking about reflexivity, some design principles, and how it can be used to improve mental health. So that's great. I can save it into my notes again. So I have this little summary which I can reuse later. And I can even generate an article outline which can maybe then be used as a sort of backbone for my research later when I go into this field. Let's say if I want to write a blog article first or if I want to write a research, um, I would use this outline that is generated here to see the topics that I want to touch and maybe understand a little bit better how I'm going to build my narrative. So this is how it would work uh, with this approach. As you can see what we did, we imported some content from Google Scholar. We could also use some other uh, research paper archives like uh, PubMed or PLOS or Archive as well. Uh, then we visualized the graph. We identified the main topics inside visually and also using the AI. Then we understood uh, how they connect, what are the ones that are more interesting to us. We zoomed in onto them, explored them a little bit further using both the AI and by importing more data. And then once we built a full graph, we also added some project notes, uh, some ideas based on this research. And then we also used uh, gap insights to generate some gaps in this network to see how we can connect those ideas in a more interesting way. And finally, we also use these uh, highlights uh, where we uh, selected the ideas uh, that can be used to connect this discourse to other discourses or to develop it further. And then we generated some ideas and content based on that. And once we were done, we summarized all our findings and uh, generated an outline for a paper that we can write based on those ideas. Of course, in a real life process, this would probably take uh, some more time and you would have a much more comprehensive set of notes and you would want to import more data but I just wanted to show you this general workflow how it works so you can apply it to your own research processes and see how AI can be used as an assistant uh, here so instead of sort of using it to generate content for you you're using it to guide your thought through an existing discourse generating some interesting discoveries and ideas along the way. And if you ever want to repeat this workflow, it's available here on the right, so you can just follow it step by step here. There are some more steps that we didn't cover, but I think for now that's enough. And I hope that you enjoy using it. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave the comments to this video or contact us through the support portal. Try it out on infranodus.com. And also feel free to subscribe to this channel so you can get informed when we publish more videos on this topic. Thank you.